as you can see, I'm without coffee today, but I'm still energetic and I'm still ready to tell you the news and to give you the inside skinny. Today, it's going to be a very interesting show. We have two of the top people who know what goes on in the talk show world. They come from incredible backgrounds and with everything that's going on in the industry today, especially like with Ellen DeGeneres and the things like that are, that are going on in the talk show world, we're going to find out what really goes on behind the scenes for the shows that you love to watch. Today, let me bring on the air. We have Lee Fried and we have Jay Jones. Hello, guys. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you? Yeah. Nice to have you on. It's so great. You know, you know, Lee and I know each other for, I guess, 30 years. And Jay, well, you, you well, were... put a number to it, honey. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> I know, never reveal, a, never reveal a girl's <laughs> age. <laughs> I know. We just put decades on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's all right. We look good, though. Don't we look good, Jay? Don't we, we look, look good? fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I want you, before we get into it, I want you each to speak, I guess, ladies first, to tell us a little bit about your history and background and why you're perfect for what we're going to be talking about, about these talk show, the talk show truth. Well, I spent my entire career in television. I started out at NBC back in the days when NBC really meant something, when there were three networks. And then I worked for Sally Jesse Raphael, for Lifetime, for E! Entertainment Television, somewhere in the middle. I did a quick stint in uh, Politically Incorrect. And uh, With Bill Maher? Yeah, I was going to say, you work with Bill that's a good bit. Five weeks. Yeah, Mia, you get a thumbs up from me, too. <laughs> five, weeks, five weeks. Wow. Very um, cool. You've done it all. I've done it all. I, I've uh, worked a little bit with Letterman, with Saturday Night Live, basically been in daytime programming my whole life, soap operas, talk shows. So you've seen a lot, Lee. You've seen a lot. Well, I've seen a lot. I'm going to try to remember something. <laughs> and Jay, now we're going to move over to Jay. Jay, tell us your history. Oh, man. Uh, you know, I've done several decades of television on uh, the showrunner side, the EP side, uh, the programming side. I met Lee when I was at the wonderful shop of Sally and Raphael. We just actually had a conversation not too long ago on uh, Zoom where we all got together and Sally was there and all our great friends. And then just recently, maybe not even that recently, like 10 years ago, I had to go to the dark side, of, uh, as we call it in the business, and get into this PR world. So, but I still the you think the PR world's the dark side? It is the dark if, side, if, Jay. If it's so refreshing to hear you be so honest about it. <laughs> well, That's not true. Well, if you follow, I'll them, be quietly. They're, all, they're grinding and trying to get somebody on television and so forth and so on. You know, they're gonna say, "Oh, you went to the dark side." If you used to be a producer and then come over to the PR world, it could just be a term, but. You kind of feel like it's a dark side. But, you, but, you know, going to the PR world and, and having been on, you know, uh, on these shows and knowing what goes on, you are more of an expert than most of the PR people out there. Well, you wear several hats. Like Lee was saying earlier, you know, she was at the Mar show and, the, and NBC and various places. So you do, as you jump around, you wear several hats. So when I'm with a client, for instance, for the sports thing that's happening right now, you know, they're boycotting Wisconsin and everything that's happening. So I'm able to put on a television hat and think of how I can make the content better and pitch to the producers and see who works for a certain network, certain digital platforms. So that that's a help. Can I, can I put a label? Can I call you a spin doctor? Well, you know what? I tell people, and I, I try not to use the word spin. We don't what, like spin, what? right, Lee? Spin is spin gets a bad you, How are we going to spin it today? I, no, no, no. I went from PR to writing. I write um, a social column, and I've written for Newsday. And uh, I don't, I, I love this being a publicist. Publicity has a lot of power. And oh, I'm yeah. certainly Sally Jesse Raphael's spin doctor. Do you, do you believe that there's no such thing as bad publicity? No. I do. <laughs> oh, okay. Here we go. I don't. You don't I, I fight that battle every day. I got a couple of uh, kind of 
what I call like kind of squares. My my professors. I got a professor in Chicago, University of Chicago. I had a couple I represent from Columbia University, and they just want it straight. Like I, if it if it's out of their wheelhouse, everyone says yeah, they won't yeah. touch it. And I'm like, no. This is one of those super, super duper freeways where there's more than one lane. And in today's world, I think you have to be that flexible. As a publicist, for instance, like Lee or myself now, you have to be able to go into various wells to be able to have a better conversation. Because frankly, to me, television is like a dinner conversation between friends over a glass of wine. Just like now, except I don't have the wine. I just have coffee, unfortunately. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Not even that. That's a great title. (laughs) Now, tell me something. Tell us, first of all, some of the A list names or that, you know, that people would recognize that you've worked with and how you become an armchair psychologist when you work with somebody who's in the public eye like that. That's you, Lee. What? Right oh, up, my right God. Up. I only became the armchair psychologist. Um, <laughs> I don't even want to say. Listen, should I lie down while you talk to me? (laughs) I will say one thing about there being bad publicity. I think there, I tell people there's no such thing as bad publicity, but actually I've seen a few people cross the line. And if you say, or you damage your image, let's say Mel Gibson, 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 for example. Right. Even on the Sally show, there came a point, not that we said or did anything so wrong, but the show was criticized to a point where they wrote so many bad things about us that it did ruin the image of the show. Could a show like Sally Jesse or Geraldo or Donahue or even, uh, you know, Jerry Springer exist in today's, you know, environment? I mean, we are so... Like we're afraid to speak now. Mel Brooks, I spoke with Mel Brooks said to me, it's he thinks it's ridiculous. He said we could, you know, the whole idea of of, of putting these racial stereotypes on the big screen or you know was to basically make fun of them to to show how silly we are to even have them. We didn't have racial stereotypes. We had slutty teens. Excuse me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, that, that's we had white trailers. Take it back. They take it back. <laughs> Seriously, well, we, had joke, we had a joke at the Sally Show when we would say, if anyone rolled their R's and said Ara Ara, we thought that was a great guess. Like we would say, we would say, oh, we need some team who's a dancer or what. We we just called it. We were so wound up and so under pressure. We'd be like, who's got strippers and who's got yeah. crackheads? <laughs> That you really couldn't do inside, I think, the the, the offices space now, the green right. rooms, as they call them. But the shows themselves, Jerry's still on the air. He kind of reinvented Yeah, yeah he, he was it's pretty still good. still happening. The yeah. key is to reinvent. More rooms on the air. Relevant. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. You know, but what about what about like I, I had experiences like I was on all the shows and I had an experience with Geraldo that that, I, that stays with me. Uh, it was you know back then they occasionally would do a live show. And I, yeah, I mean I mean one time one time it was great. Uh, they had Jennifer Flowers. Now in case the oh, viewers don't, oh, oh that's Jennifer Flowers. Sure. Right, Jennifer yeah. Flowers. But so. this is when Clinton was running for office and it came out that. Jennifer had seen a certain beauty mark of the uh, incoming president. And, you know, right on the air, I'm sitting next to George. I'm sitting next to George Wayne from Vanity Fair. And he he, he addresses her by saying, "Uh, I've heard that you've seen the presidential penis. You know, (laughs) I mean, you know, talk about you could never do that now. Never. By the way, that was bad publicity for President Clinton. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You know, that's the thing. You know, uh, what is bad publicity? Now, now you, you can't get any oxygen in the air. You know, you can't breathe any oxygen in the air. If you if you decide to get creative with with your with your, you know, insults, you, you can't insult anybody. You know, it's, it's getting to the point where, you know, anything you say is going to be under the microscope. But I, I do remember with Geraldo, he did something I thought was very unethical. He had a, a guest on, I know you remember uh, Ernest Borgnine and Jan Michael Vincent, 
from Airwolf in the 80s. And Jan came on the show, and it was a live show, and he was completely high as a kite. And I said to Geraldo, before we went on air, you're going to really put him on the air? And he said, yeah, why not? It's entertainment. And I was like, uh, all right, man, you know. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, I want to I want to try to be a little more sensitive to this than what he was trying to do. And he had other journalists on there, like Richard Johnson from Page Six and Mike Walker at the time, who was, you know, one of the tabloids. And anyway, so far... Yeah, right, exactly. So finally... The publicist never forgets. Yes, I see. <laughs> I better be careful what I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> no, so there came... I, I kept quiet for the first 15 minutes, and then suddenly I, I decided to speak up, and I said, Jen, right on the live TV, I said, you're high right now, aren't you? And he's like, uh... You know, you know and he's really, like, you know, backpedaling. Now, a few moments earlier, he kept pleading to Geraldo and to anybody who would listen if he could only get his wife to take him back. And I said to him right on the air, I said, Jan, you're high right now. What you said earlier, you know, you would do anything to go back with your wife. Well, look at that camera. It's live TV. I guarantee you she's on the other side of it. If you wanted to take you back, tell her right now, speak to the camera because she's there and, and, and make your plea, make your case. And you know what? You were, put, did. You were producing on stage, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, the thing about VR and even Sally, like Sally had the red glasses, right? Like you have glasses, like that was her thing and that made her a lot of money. So yeah. that's a great thing, even though she was getting, because getting maybe some bad press, like you were saying, and even GR, when he went, you know, he had stories like that. He had the chair throwing, he had crazy happenings in LA and this, that, and the other. But the, unfortunately, at least back then, the money, if, if you got the ad money and the marketing, they were kind of ready to, you know, the, 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 the CEOs and the GMs and the stations and of Trip, they would give you a pass. But today, it's, if you come out with bad, um, uh, uh, bad, just like a Matt Lauer had bad problems and money, they will pull you. You know, Bill O'Reilly's still a great guy. They pulled him. Charlie Rose, fantastic, right? He didn't right. get a second chance. Pull right. Matt, this, that, and the other. So the sensitivity of the world, just because of times and times. You 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 time. think that you think that Harvey Weinstein and Ronan Farrow and, and the Me Too movement, you think that was the beginning of it, or or it's it's been a bubbling keg that we haven't really been paying attention to that, you know, just happened to be lit when you know when when it came out that's no longer was the casting couch a permissible I think it's Harvey's fault. <laughs> yeah. Well I it do. hit Hollywood. Do. You do, you really do. I really do. Give me give me your plead your case. It was so high profile. He was abusing bold name actresses for a really long time and his behavior really define sexual harassment. I'm not talking about like he just said some rude things. Uh, he wouldn't, he blackballed them in the business if they didn't sleep with him. He threatened them, he asked them to meet him and, 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 and push himself against them and, and raped them. I mean, come on. And that went on for years and years and years. And when it finally came out, there were just two, I mean, Gwyneth Paltrow, all these women who lent a lot of credibility to, to this kind of stuff. And right. I mean, But you know what? You know what, though? The media is culpable because I'm going to tell you a little story about Harvey Weinstein. I ran into Harvey one day before 9-11 in Saint-Tropez and caught him in the act. And he recognized me and he was freaking out and said, you don't know, you know who I am. I'll ruin you if you, you know, right. say, and you know what? Uh, a few weeks later, I, I, I ran into Richard Johnson at page six and I told Richard what had happened. He wouldn't touch it. I went to other pub, other, other gossip columnists. They wouldn't touch it. In fact, yeah. I got, I even got threatened by a few of them that if That's I went right. forward with it, and I, you know, I, I've always worked for myself, so I don't, I didn't worry about any kind of right. retaliation like other people. But what I found astounding was just how he was untouchable at that point. I, I, I just find it, what was the, the keg that got pulled that, that 
that changed all that. What's your take, Jay? I, I think a lot of it has to do with um, the book by Roland. I think Harvey and I think Rose McGowan and like Lee was saying, they put the Hollywood uh, celebrities out front. And more importantly, at the time when they, and I hate to say this, I'm not sure, 100% accurate, when they weren't listening to the voices of women or women were coming forward but not strong enough, we began to listen to the voices of women more and more, and that, it took a while, but now it became one of those things, just like Floyd, just like everything else, we're starting to listen, and that came... But why now? Is it because of Trump? Well, the evidence of... also came out. Some guys admitted it. CK admitted it. Harvey didn't really not admit it. He said it was just that it was, you know, accepted. It was consensual. It was consensual. That, yeah, that's so the key word in his conversation. You know, and um, and surveillance. You know those surveillance cameras. And yeah, well, we got out. Big Brother looking over our shoulder. Exactly. Now. Well, you know, and 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 we start, and as men, I think we also started to feel like, wait a minute, you know, our acts are need needs to be questioned, and we might have been getting away with it. I mean, the couch, the cast, couch and couch, or the cast and couch. And oh, that's couch. been retired forever now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a different <laughs> word, right? You don't even you know, think about. We're not going to Studio 54 anymore either. When it was right. just, a, you know, that right. was a good time. Now a good time is hanging out on TikTok, and that sucks. Yeah, that's just, now it's like hanging out here. <laughs> Everybody has a lot of time on their hands, which is kind of scary. What about you, Lee? What do you, what do you I think? think was... that once um, one person could say it and get away with it and be validated, and someone started, you know, once they said me too, Right. Every woman has had that experience. I've certainly been sexually harassed. I mean, but everyone had the experience and everybody came up and it was like it just bubbled up because everyone had it inside them. And really, a women feel that they themselves might have done something wrong. Why did they let this guy think that he could get away with that? Why did they show up in that hotel room? You know, it, there's a lot of um, you feel a blame. Now, when yeah. you're when you're working, when you're working, talking about sexual harassment, you're working on your shows. Have there were there any moments that you guys can recall where you have, you know averted catastrophe, where you, you you saw something unfolding and you're like, oh my god, if I don't stop this, this is going to be a disaster for everybody. I, I couldn't say I. I, I... I'm some hero in that sense. I mean, what happens is in these shows, you're so programmed, you're moving so fast, the language at that time was just that gritty. Yeah. So it was like, hey, MF or son of a B or yeah, right, this, right. that and the other. No, you can say anything you want on this show. Yeah, you can, but now you yeah. just can't go. It's just you think twice before you speak. You have to. It's but scary because I'm 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 sometimes I'm just so self-conscious. You know, I, I'm afraid to like be myself unless I know you very well. I would be very reserved. And, and Lee, you had you had told me privately that you've been through some things. You want to share a little bit of it? Well, you know, I came of age at NBC. It was practically a Mad Men, uh, post Mad Men era, and basically, I was the only person not sleeping with the boss who got promoted. So really, it was the female secretaries that started all these rumors about me that I only found out at the end of my tenure. My bosses came to me and said, I hear you're sleeping with your boss. I had two. And I'm like, you're my boss. Am I sleeping with you? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm like, so who do you think I'm sleeping with? Having said that, their boss is boss, is boss at uh, one convention. The two top guys in the Department did try to take me back to the room together. And I just said, Oh, guys, thank you very much, but no, thank you. And that was it. My job wasn't in jeopardy, nothing happened. Right, right. You got lucky. And then, well, I don't know about that, but all the girls who there, there was one a guy in between at that department who was sleeping with a very pretty associate. She was smart, she was good. He was fired for being drunk. He, I'm, after his going away part, I mean, drinking too much. Right. Very drunk, not 
drunk once. And at the going away party, I'm walking back to the office at the same time he is, and he now pushed his body against me. And he never even liked me. And I was like, and thanks, but no thanks, is pretty much. Or I thought I was flattered when I would run out the room. Yeah. And he looked at me and he said, Well, that's the thing about you. You never had any class. Oh. <laughs> and I oh. Said, Goodbye. Now, when you think now, when you think about some of the celebrity guests that were on the show, did you ever have? I mean, you, I know you had interaction with them. What was the high points for you? If you can maybe mention a couple of the famous faces you've worked with, if you have high points or low points that you want to mention. I don't. I don't really. I mean, I love Jane Fonda, but I didn't work with her. I, I've met her on, on occasion. Um, what is it about Jane that you like? Hanoi Jane. I love Jane. I, I she really, she's got style. She's got class. She's gritty. She's got courage. And she knows how to age. And oh, she does oh, it. Yes. She's very honest. Mm -hmm. Very honest. She credits her surgeon. She credits, she says she had problems when she was younger with her daughter. She talks about her issues. And she looks damn good. Oh, yeah. 82. 82 years old. She's fantastic. fantastic. I'm watching her. And Jay, what about you? Anybody? Well, you can... I was just kind of with the, the talent of the shows. The cool thing about that is, you know, that's the private plane experience, the great table restaurant experience, all the energy. My niche was basically just kind of a, a newsmaker type of booker. So I never really booked like a, you know, a Bradley Cooper where I was able to have an exchange with him. But if I had a great show, we'd go out with Arala, we'd go out with Sally. I've been out with various, you know, I work with Montel, and, you, you you know, to be around them and have a little bit of the ripple effect is always fun. It's always something to talk about. And, and I guess when, you, when you're when when you you working on those shows, you, you know that you're, you, you're a power broker. When you go to a restaurant, you get a seat right away. <laughs> I have, well, you know, those restaurants here in the back, you know, or out where you are in Hamptons, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Spot. You, you think we'll, we think we'll ever people. find those glory days again? Uh, you know, I mean, once this is all over, I hope so. You know, you miss, I you miss it. Absolutely. You know, I always, I, listen. I miss every aspect of the business when it comes to like the hardcore news aspect. I miss the control room. I, you know, make you know quick calls, private planes, whatever that case might have been. But, you know, I try to still still have a good time. I miss mm -hmm. the black ties, the Emmys. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of fun to that. I, you know, you, you corral with people. The parties, the parties were something fun. else. Well, I used to go to Elaine with Michelle <laughs> Phillips from the Mamas and Oh, Michelle, you don't oh, want to hear Mich Michelle good. Phillips. I love her. She was so my very I, first interview. I met, I met her when I was the publicist for Search for Tomorrow in the 80s, and she, in the late 80s, and she did a cameo. And in those days, you really wined and dined. As I said, the networks were very different. So I took her to a very lovely restaurant, and we ordered a lot of wine. And I ended up in her hotel room. But it wasn't <laughs> Let me tell you something. Watch, to watch uh, an awards show, and I passed out. And we well, were, that's the thing. Well, that's, that's not unusual. Best friends since then, and that's, we're still very uh, close. Jeff, so Tozier, who was, Jeff Tozier, who was her boyfriend for a little while, she... On my first interview, I'm interviewing her in Union Square, by, by, and I'm telling you, she was hitting on me the whole time, and I was very, very hungover. And, I, and you know, I'm looking at her going, she looks great, but it's my first gig, and God forbid I do something like that. No, 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 no. But the good thing is that my friend Jeff Tozier came by, and they ended up having like an eight-year relationship. I don't That's know if you ever met, met Jeff. That's how she met Jeff through me. Oh, my God. <laughs> And then you want to hear that's funny? I'm I'm driving in my car like like five years later, and they both got arrested for marijuana possession years later. Oh my! <laughs> Stop smoking! Unbelievable! But I'm thinking I'm responsible. Oh my God! Do I have to go bail them out? <laughs> they got arrested for, for marijuana. I don't remember ever hearing that. Oh yeah, they did. They did. Look Are it up. This was the back in the, I would say, the early 90s. You can you get know. arrested for marijuana. I don't think so. Back then. Back then. Yeah, now now you get arrested. I'm sure then. 
I think I would have known, but no, it no, I'm, I, I, re, I have a memory like a sieve, man. <laughs> I remember. I have no memory at all, but those kind of things I remember. Um, yeah, Jeff was a gorgeous guy. And okay, so you met him a few times. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been friends with her since then. I, of course, I remember. Do you still keep in touch with Michelle? Yes. Oh, that's great. That's great. Wow. I'm telling you, we are lifetime girlfriends. <laughs> that's great. So you're a mom. So, so you're an honorary mama. <laughs> she had a whole. I I knew I met Jeff countless times. That's great. Well, that's a very interesting story. You no, know, I. She made a dinner party for me. Uh, when I came to LA, it was Angelica Houston and her husband at the time, and George Siegel and his wife. And Jeff was gone by then. She was with uh, Zach's, the plastic wow. surgeon. And, uh, I know she was good buddies with Jack Nicholson back then, also. She tried to get, I could have been his secretary, but I decided to stay a publicist. Jack! <laughs> even E, she was, and I was leaving LA. She's like, Jack's looking for an assistant. Do you want the job? Wow. And, and you said no? Said you turned, you turned Jack and... down? Isn't that as good as it gets? <laughs> uh, I just watched that the other day. It's better That's to a have classic. your career, I think, than to only be someone's assistant. Well, no, I know. You're too big. You, you, you know, you, that job would have turned into something else for you. I know you. You have such a big personality. Jack would have loved you. But that's essential. Loving you and giving you a real career are two different things. Yes, no, I get it. Um, we have to wrap this up, so I would love you guys to give me sort of a, a closing statement on how you see the industry now. I mean, we didn't really get into Ellen DeGeneres and what's happening there. Maybe we can get some insight on, uh, you know, what we, you know, these disturbing comments that are coming from her, you know, coming from her show and, you know, when that happens, it's going to make everybody even more, you know, tight-fisted and closed-minded and, 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 and being themselves on these shows. I disagree. I do, too. Okay, do so too. tell me why. Stop harassing people. <laughs> you, can, you can tell someone they look good. You can tell, you can joke around. You can use dirty words. You can say, say all kinds of things. But you don't harass somebody. There is a difference. You don't tell some, and you don't yell and scream and threaten people's jobs and make them feel afraid to go to a meeting. Um, I, I mean, there, they did a lot of that guy did all kinds of stuff to these girls. And if you're a boss, you don't try to make a move or to tell a girl, well, what, what are we doing with these women? I mean, come on. Well, sadly, I like what you're saying here. Very nice, Sweetie. That makes sense. And, well, and, and Jay? It goes down to leadership as well. You said spin earlier, but it seems like the term today is get ahead of it. And that's what I think Ellen at least tried to do in this case. She didn't hide. She didn't duck the media. She didn't make a lot of statements, but she did do some actions in which she got rid of major talent. Um, she's going to move forward. We're going to forgive her. Because there's so much going on again, finances, ratings. They're not going to yeah. cut her out. Three Have you watched her show since it's been on Zoom? You know, doing it on Zoom, it is not I the have. same show. It's not the same show. It's not the same show. It. It's really boring. Very what? boring. Oh my God. Did I say but that? Just... Shame on me. <laughs> but that's Bad not girl. It is boring. Yeah. It's Even my wife. My wife's a big fan. My wife's a big fan of her, and she's like, you know, it just shows you though how important a studio is, how important the people that work in, on the show are to make that show magical. Right. And when you're just left alone with a camera, either you've got the goods or you don't. And, and some, there are some people that could stand in front of a camera naked and be in compelling and engrossing, but there are others that need that, you know, that teamwork to make it special. Colbert made his show great. Seth Meyers still has a great show. Bill Maher. I haven't watched it. Yeah. Bill Maher's got a good one. I watched him the other day. See, the thing about Bill, he gets incredible guests. Yes. So, And he has that whole talent where you don't really miss the audience because he's doing 
rules and he's doing skits and he's doing an act. So he's but he's engaging. He's engaging without right. an audience. Yeah, right. exactly. Without the crew. I see Jimmy Fallon, the little girl, so for the whole. I'm worried episode. about the other shows. <laughs> you know, I'm worried about the. Let's kick off the air. Uh, Lee Fry, Jay Jones, Nash. <laughs> yeah, two two of the great people behind the scenes, the movers and shakers who get ahead of everything out there. You got to pay attention to these two names. Thank you for being on the show today. Love Thank you both. You. It was really great. Maybe we'll do it again. All right. Thank Peace. You. Okay. okay.